and I'm making this video as a quick tutorial to how to use Card Game Simulator. So first thing I want to mention is the website cardgamesimulator.com where you can actually download the app. Um, I'm using a Mac here so I would download it for here from the Mac App Store but I've already downloaded it so let's go ahead and actually launch the app. When you first start it it'll show this uh, little title screen um, but you can just click anywhere to continue. And then the very first time you start the app, it'll prompt you to watch this tutorial video, which we're already watching, so we can go ahead and click no here. And it'll actually remember for future times that, you know, that's we don't need to watch that again. Um, so let's just go ahead and jump right into uh, playing a game with uh, Card Game Simulator. So once you hit start, uh, you'll be prompted to select a deck for the game you currently have selected. By default, it comes with standard 52 card deck or you could play with jokers. Um, let's just take the standard 52 card deck here. And then it'll prompt you to be dealt a hand. You can change the number of cards you'll be dealt, um, but for default, let's just go with two. And then uh, once those two cards are dealt, you can see I have two cards in hand, and there's 50 cards left in the stock. So um, let's do some actual manipulation of the cards. Um, you have the cards in your hand, you can move them onto the field, uh, and then vice versa, you can put them from the field onto your hand. Um, when you actually have a card on the field, you can select it, and then it gives you some options for how to control them. This button is the flip. You can also press F on the keyboard to do the flip as well. Uh, this is a rotation, uh, where it will actually rotate 90 degrees every time. Um, it's easier to tell, if you look at it from the backside, that it keeps rotating backwards. And then uh, this one, toggles between a 90 degree rotation and a 0 degree rotation. So that could be useful for just keeping the state based off the card game that you have. Um, and then when you look at this card uh, in this mode, you can see that the name is hidden and if you flip it, the name reappears. Um, you can actually get more details by selecting this drop down here. Um, you can see the set, which you know is just standard 52 card set. Um, the ID, the rank is 4, it's clubs. Uh, you can also zoom in on the card here by clicking here, and then just clicking again will get rid of it. Um, if you want the full set of details about the card, you can select this little zoom button here, and it'll show up that the same way. Um, so here it is, and then uh, we can actually look into different manipulation of the deck. So, so right now we have loaded into a single deck. Uh, we can load up a second deck, and it'll load up next to it as well. So you can see it here, stock 50, stock 54. It's higher because it has uh, cards, including the jokers. Um, there's four jokers, so, and we only got dealt two cards, and you can see we still have, you know, the three cards in our hand. Um, you can actually move this hand option up and down, and then these toggles will toggle between up and down as well. Um, if loading these decks isn't enough to be able to find the cards that you want, you can even search for specific cards. Um, say I just want to search for the Queen of Spades. I can do a filter for Queen, Spades, and then it'll show up here. Um, so now let's talk about actually looking at the individual stacks of cards. Uh, you can select it and it'll bring up this top down. Um, you can then view what's in there. And here we just have the Queen of Spades. That's what we search for, so we can put it onto the field. Uh, and then we can get rid of this because we no longer need this. Uh, you can see we still have the two decks that we loaded before, and we can actually view those separately as well. This one is the one with the jokers, and then this one is the one with uh, all the you know, standard 52 cards. So we don't need this. Uh, we can actually go ahead and delete the one with the jokers. Um, one thing I should mention as well is about being able to view the deck. You can see the top left, the left side of this little section here refers to the top of the deck, and then the far right, if you scroll to the right, will be the bottom of the deck. And that's how they're ordered right now. Uh, we can actually also shuffle the deck, and you can see it be, you know, different. Like right now, the jack is on top. If I shuffle it again, and then you'll see now the eight of diamonds is on top. We also have this uh, point counter just to keep track of our score. Uh, and then if you click on it in the center, 
you can have your player name show up and then any other players that may be connected to the game online would also show up with their scores. So I can put, you know, my name David here. And then uh, it'll actually remember that for future games. So anytime I join a game, it'll automatically have my name as David. Um, we can also have some dice appear. So let's go ahead and create, you know, a random D6. Uh, and then it'll roll once you put it onto the field. But you can also manipulate it by going up and down like this with these plus and minus keys. You can roll it again, and you can just get rid of it again. So that's the general interface of how to, you know, manipulate cards in the playing area. Um, so let's go back and let's do something a bit more interesting. We want to actually do online gameplay. Uh, so for that, game online. We can click this join button and then select internet to play over the internet. I've started this game on my Windows PC, so I'll be connecting to my Windows PC over the internet. Um, if I knew the IP address, I could type it in here and instead of, you know, doing through the normal standard discovery process. Um, and if I had set a password when creating the room, uh, that would have enter the password in here as well. Um, to see how that password is set, I would create the room by pressing this plus button, and then uh, there's the name that showed up when we selected the game, and then we would enter the password there. Um, but I don't actually want to create one since I already created one, so I'll just you know rejoin over here. And once again, no password, so not necessary. I can just go ahead and select this and enter the game. And then once it's connected, it'll take a little bit for it to load up. But once it's loaded, we can go ahead and get this prompt. Um, you know, same one that we saw when we started the game through our normal process. Um, so we'll go ahead and select yes to be dealt the hand of two cards again. Um, so there was another player that already joined and the you know the player that hosted the game as well. So the two cards were dealt to the original player, two cards to the other player that joined, two cards to me. So now there's 46 cards left in the stock. Um, is shared between all players. So if I were to remove one right there, uh, every player would see that gone. And then on my Windows PC, I'm going to remove one as well. And then you can see that, yep, that even though I wasn't the one manipulating that, it's gone over there as well now. So uh, yeah, the deck is shared, um, and you can all move cards around. I didn't originally move this card, but I can control it now. Uh, and then likewise, uh, the other player can manipulate my card and control it that way as well. Uh, so that's the general overview how you can get online and play with each other. Uh, play online you know, with the standard 52 card deck, but more interesting than that is being able to play custom games. There's a cool open source card game called Archmage, um, which has already had support for that built into this. Um, I know the URL for where that Archmage support is, so I can go ahead and type that URL here. Uh, it's also available on the Card Game Simulator website, so you can once again refer to the website for how to download this. So I can type in this URL, Archmage, and it'll download the info for this card game. It'll actually download the pre-built decks and all of the cards that are included with this game. Um, by default, it will just download the information of the cards, and then once we actually get the cards, we can view them here. Uh, you can see the images get downloaded over time. They just get downloaded. Um, we can actually view them in a similar way that we saw the other standard 52 cards here. Uh, and then if we go right, we can keep going through all the images. We can also search for cards using the search bar. Um, so maybe we'll search for some specific card by clicking the filter. And then let's say we want to look for some House of Nobles cards. Uh, and now the filters it only shows House of Noble cards. We can clear the filter. And then say we want to only look for this Big Brother card. You can just type in Big Brother. And uh, Yep, that's the general search functionality for all the cards. 
once we've gotten you know an idea of what the cards are, maybe we want to build our own decks. Uh, so that's where this decks editor comes into play. You can select the deck editor, and it'll show you all the default decks that are included. And we can even just go and take one, maybe modify it. Um, so here's this aggro deck. Uh, maybe want to make it worse by <laughs> removing this card and then adding this one. Uh, so you can click the check mark after you've made your change. You can see the list there, and then we'll we'll save it. So that's the updated deck list and then we can of course play with this updated deck list and you know have a game play out um, so that's a general overview of being able to download custom games but if you want to you can even have some functionality to create your own custom games within the app itself um, there's still work to be done in terms of uh, making this easily shareable but you can turn on developer mode by going to the settings so it's going to like settings and then I click this developer mode uh, and now when I go to the game manipulation menu which you know is done by clicking here uh, we can now see there's a new option this plus button that was added before we only had the download the delete and share uh, but now that we have this plus button we can create new ones from directly within the app itself so let's say I'm going to create a new card game called Test Game. Um, and then, you know, we can keep these images for the card back, uh, the banner, and then the play mode that's shown when you're playing the game. Um, but if you want to change the images, there's this download or getting from the file system. The download one is the little arrow, and then the getting from the file system is a little plus sign. But uh, I think I'm okay with some of these defaults. So I'm just going to leave it as it is, and then I'll press plus, and then here we go. We got it automatically created here, uh, and then we can go to the cards editor, and we can see there's no cards in this game because we just created it, but we can add in a card. So uh, I like to you know make custom cards on my own time. Um, I down well I uploaded one to a website called MTG.Design, which is a useful website for being able to actually get this card. Made for Magic the Gathering, um, but now we want to actually upload it into here. Uh, so I'll, the, the card I created was called Blossoming Plants. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it there. And I'm gonna download it from the internet, and I know that it exists at this URL: mtg. Design slash i might ninety two jpeg. And then bam, there's my blossoming plants, and it's added to the game. Um, so now that it exists there, you know I could always create a new deck, uh, test plants, and we'll call it one blossoming plants. And bam, now this deck has blossoming plants in it, and I can actually play the game with this, you know, being the only card in there. I can. Uh, drag this out, bam, it's the blossoming plants. So yeah, that's the general view of being able to play games, creating them, um, and general functionality for Card Game Simulator. Uh, last thing I want to mention is for the, the settings. Um, this hide reprints is specifically if you have a card game where you have multiple versions of the same card, you don't always want to show them when you're in the Cards Explorer or in the Deck Editor. Um, you could disable that or enable that. And then uh, if you want to contact me, there's this mail button here, which will you you know bring up this prompt and you can submit any bug reports or performance issues or suggestions you want. So yeah, um, you can also contact me at david at and I hope you uh, enjoy Card Game Simulator.